Hi, today I want to create a super simple and easy to set up Stripe checkout session with you together. And the nice thing about this tutorial is we're going actually to start fully blank. We're going to start from scratch. So we have no pre-made actions or apps, no pre-made requests, nothing. We're going to go step by step together through the whole setup and yeah. So if you need to set up a Stripe checkout in Wist and Webflow and you want to use it with any backend, not just limited to Xano, this works for Superbase, this works for Firebase, this works for every other base that you could use, this video is right for you and we're going to do it together step by step. This is great for beginners. So let's get started right now. So first of all, we want to, uh, actually, we want to create a secret. And the nice thing about with secret is that it allows us to secure a uh, securely store an API key, API token in WIST without having to expose it on the front end. So I'm going to create a secret for Stripe API key here and I'm going to put my Stripe API key right in there. And now that's it. So now we want to add an app. So I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to call this app Stripe. And Stripe is a REST API. So if they have something called C-U-R-L, curl, or sometimes it's shell, curl, you want to use REST. And I'm just going to write return and I start setting the string. And now I'm going to go to Stripe's documentation for this is what we're trying to build here, a Stripe checkout page. And I'm going to go to their developer API docs. And when we go to, s to checkout, right in here, we will have sessions. And we want to do a create a checkout session. And we want to copy this URL in here, which is the curl URL. And this is basically the internet address in which we will be connecting or contacting Stripe's API. And we just want to remove the extensions. We want to keep the V1 in here because that's something static. Because the nice thing is this URL is always the same for all Stripe API endpoints. So what we're going to use is we're going to add the base URL and then we're just only going to define the paths, the ones that I just copied in here. Um, to then just show us the dynamic data. So let's call this uh, actually cre oh, create session. And let's do underscore create session. And I'm going to call the Stripe API. And I'm going to write return. And I'm going to put my extension in here, in here so that we can call that. And let's do a post. As you can see, it clearly says it's a post. And I'm going to do a post. And now we have to add the URL parameters. Most requests, actually, if you're working with Xano, you will just send that in the body. But in And if you send files, you're going to put that in the body, of course. But for Stripe, working together with WIST in it itself in here is quite unique. I experimented with it. It doesn't work if you add anything in the body. So you have to add that as URL parameters. So let's do that. But first of all, let's start with authorization. So we're going to go to authorization and we're going to do um, return because we need to authenticate, as you can see in here, it needs to have authentication in the U. That's the authentication part. So we're going to add bearer. And then we're going to add a plus and merge this together with our Stripe secret, with our WIS secret containing the Stripe API. Can you see? see? It's not going to be exposed. It's 100% secure in here. That's it. And now if I'm going to run this request, it will give me some errors, of course, um, because we need to adjust that format. But let me just add the parameters in here first so that we can copy uh, when it says this, this format you're using is wrong and because I don't know that format out of the top of my hat, which is a nice thing with working with great populated and 
a very popular and great document in APIs like Stripe, that API actually in the response is telling you what you're doing wrong. So it's a good thing also to test that out. So I need to add the success URL in here, just like that. And let's go to WIST. And actually, let's add the success URL in here. I'm going to write return. And I'm going to do HTTPS slash slash com. Perfect. And as you can see, uh, it will tell me that six subscription data is needed for this. And actually, since we're passing that on in the URL parameters, we may not even need to modify anything on the headers because the way WIST works is WIST is doing some magic for us on the back end. Some things are for us simplified than in ordinary vanilla JavaScript development, which is basically what WIST is. WIST is vanilla JavaScript. But WIST is doing all those complicated things, like making sure it's the right format and all of that, for us. So there is a good chance that we don't even need to do that step because WIST is, in this case, thinking for us and simplifying it so much. Um, and now we're just going to go back to the documentation and we're going to add the first line item with the price. So we're going to go to the line item and let me get my price ID from my clipboard. Perfect. And let's go in here and let's write return and I'm going to put my price ID. Oh, I don't like that quotation marks. I like those better. Perfect. And let's have my, my price ID in here. And now I'm just going to go to the next item and we're copying the quantity. And as you can see, it is identifying those. So if you want to add multiple items, you would then just add like a one in here and another parameter. There's also a way where you can do this like um, automatically, you can populate that automatically. But if you're doing a basic Stripe checkout, just like in this video, this is more than enough. And if you want to go into all the details, that's when you really can get crazy with adding Xano and adding your backend in between to automatically get that price IDs from a table and all of that. But we're just going to do a very simple in with setup here for just a simple checkout to pay one uh, one one time fee. So. Let's do return, and we're just going to add, oh, one item is enough. Perfect. So as you can see, if I run this here, um, I need to provide a mode. So I'm just going to do mode. As you can see in here, it's also specified by their documentation mode. And we're going to do payment, because we're doing a one-time payment. By the way, for Stripe subscriptions, I highly recommend to use a backend just to make sure that all the subscriptions are targeted to the right users. Perfect. So if I were to run this, you will see that we just successfully created a Stripe session and we're going at the end have this link. And let's just get this link. Sadly, I cannot copy those things in with. So let's see if oh, actually I cannot access that. So let's after this was successful now. And as you can see, we didn't have to change the content type because WIST already thinks about those things for us. But now we want to trigger this request whenever I click the checkout button, like so. So I click that button, nothing is happening and no request is running. So I'm just going to create an action that will target this checkout button. And actually, we got to add an attribute on the checkout button first. So let's take the checkout button here and let's add a waste attribute and WEL is out of date. Always use waste. That's the new normal. That is what we are supposed to do. So it's waste. And we're going to add a Stripe checkout, just like this. So we have Stripe checkout and we're going to click on publish. And that is it. And now, once this is published, we just simply go to WIST and we're going to go, oh, we already refreshed the attributes. That's amazing. So I have that in here and I click in here. And while clicking in here, I automatically create a new action. So that's amazing. I just click on here, create a new action. Let's rename this to create Stripe checkout. Oh, check out. Just like this. Perfect. And now I'm going to do on event 
unclick prevent default just to make sure and I'm going to perform the request of creating the session right I want to create that stripe session unclick and we can even work within here with dynamic content so if I were to have a form and say actually I want to have something dynamically in here that this number is dynamic you could base this on a variable or on a form input but we're just going to have that static in this example and now if I'm going to go on here and if I click on here as you can see boom it will load this request and create the stripe checkout session so now I want to redirect the user somewhere um, I want the user to go to Stripe, actually. So what I want to do now is I also want to have another action going on. So let's go to the action in here and let's actually create a new action. And let's call this navi uh, navigate to Stripe, just like this. And I'm going to do this as an event-based action. I'm going to look for request finishes. So once the Stripe session was successfully created, I want to go to navigate to, and I'm going to do return. And actually, we don't need to do that. And I'm going to do to return. And I'm going to go to my request. Let's run this request real quick. And let's take the variable all the way on the button that will have the data.url. And now, we're dynamically going to Stripe. So let's just refresh the whole editor because it somehow has some glitches if you're going to get redirected somewhere. So if I click on here, it should do the request and forward me to Stripe. Of course, since we were iframing that, we have some issues. So let's do this on the live side. If I click on here, I will be redirected to Stripe, as you can see. And there you have it. That's how you're going to create a Stripe session directly within WIST. You can add some dynamic data in there. For example, a dynamic product ID, a dynamic quantity, or something like this. If you're going to work with subscriptions, I highly recommend to not do this. I would go through my back end just to make sure that I can auto-bill users and that everything is going as it's supposed to be. And I just want to add something because I never saw anybody in the videos mention that. Now, if I'm going to proceed that payment, there is no way to track that back to me. So what I want to do is I want to add another parameter in here called client underscore reference underscore ID. Uh, reference ID. And now in Stripe, I can just simply add a dynamic value, for example, one, two, three, and so on. And then with the client reference ID, if I'm now going to create that checkout, let's create that one real quick. Um, this checkout then here, once it is paid, so let's just do hey at wisdev.com. So actually, that whole thing just showed my credit card number, so I had to cut the bit around here because I don't want to show that. So now we have my 4242 credit number, and now what we want to do is now we want to do the test payment. So let's just add 424242, and I'm going to pay. And now we're going to track this back to the client lef reference ID. So now if we're going to go to Stripe, the nice thing about this is, as you can see, we passed on the client reference ID. And this client reference ID is the ID which we have set in WIST. So as you can see, in this request here, and this should be ideally dynamic, I have set this client reference ID. And after I proceeded with the payment on my payment page, I got over this client reference ID in Stripe. So then when I will get that webhook, it will include that client reference ID back so that then, for example, I can, uh, as an example, I can add that client reference ID into the request I'm getting. I can search through my database and then see, oh, that's the email for this person and that's their account. And now I'm going to give them access. I'm going to do a checkbox that 
is like has access, or I'm going to send them the email with my ebook or whatever. I have my AI assistant call them, whatever you want to do. So it is important always pass on a client reference ID if you need to track a payment back to a user because that way you can figure out who paid because people may use a different email. They may have a billing email, especially if you're selling something with SaaS. But yeah, that's how you're going to set up Stripe checkouts directly within WIST. And I hope that this is really going to help you, that that also helped you understand how APIs work. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your support. I really, really, really appreciate that. And yeah, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to put them down in the comments. And also please let me know if you have any wishes for any videos, anything I can do to help you. And yeah, see you tomorrow. And again, thank you so much.